In this video, we'll explore the OpenShift command line interface. As you can see here, the command line interface consists of one command, OC, and many subcommands. Many common operations are invoked using this syntax. An action refers to an action to perform such as get or describe. The resource type refers to the type of resource the action will be performed on, for example, a service or a node. The resource name or ID refers to the name or ID of the specified resource type. So for example, if I was to use a pod, the pod name would be one of those interesting names that ends with numbers and letters at the end of it. So now I'm going to uh, demonstrate using some of these commands. So I can do an OC get all, which is very verbose, and shows me everything, uh, all different types of resources that are running. I can do an OC get services and see all of the services that are running in this project. I can do get service to do, whoops, to do, let's see, to do with no dash. And I can output it as YAML syntax. And likewise, you could do JSON. These are the different other types of verbs that you can use with the OC command. Um, the types command shows most of the um, resource types known to OpenShift. So for example, pods and services. Login starts a session with the specified credentials, and of course, logout ends the session. To create a new project, use new project. To create a new application, or as it's called, a namespace, use new app. The status command will show the status of all resources in the current project. The project command either switches to another project or shows the current project name. The describe command lists the detailed attributes for the given resource. Manipulation of resources is accomplished with the get, create, edit, and delete commands. To start a build, use the start build command. To follow the build log as an application is building, use the build logs command. I'll demonstrate now how to use the OC command to change the URL for the route of the to-do list application. Remember that long route? We're going to make it much shorter and nicer. So first, I go over to my terminal and I make sure I'm logged in. Uh, see who am I? Oh, see who am I? I'm student, so I don't need to log in. And I want to see what our current project is. It's the to-do app. That's the one I want. If I do an OC status, I can see all of the different pieces and parts of the app of the project that I have running. So I have several services, um, one for MySQL and three for um, revolving around the EAP application. I can do an uh, OC get all command and see all of the things that are running. But let's do an OC get route command. OC get route. And we see that we've got two different routes here. One is the HTTPS route, and one is the plain HTTP route. And what I want to do is I want to rename the HTTP route. So I'm going to do OC edit, which we haven't seen before, on the route called to do HTTP route. And then I'm going to come down to the host area and let's see what kind of name we want. Let's, let's shorten this down to just to do. To do.cloudapps.example.com. And it automatically changed that route. So now I should be able to switch over to my application and get to this with a much shorter name. And it loads, and there's the to-do list application. 
Now I'm going to do a second demonstration of the command line interface to show you how to rebuild an application manually after changing the application source code. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have you look over here in the upper right corner of this application. We have the, uh, the label called to-do list. I'm going to change that to task list. So the first thing we want to do is clone the application. Well, it just so happens that I have the application already cloned here. So I'm going to go into the uh, DO080 apps, JEE, source, main, web app, and I'm going to edit the index.html file. And I'm going to find to do list. And I'm going to change, let's see, we're going to leave that one. I'm going to change this one to task list. So I changed the header on the left-hand side to task list. I'm going to save that. So I should have that one change made. So I'm going to add that. These are all uh, get commands. And I'm going to commit that. And I'm going to push that back to the server. And there we go. So the change is now up on GitHub. So I can initiate a build, and it's going to bring that new source code down and build a new server, uh, build a new container image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, go uh, back to and do an OC get build config and we can see that there's one build configura uh, configurator for uh, this application and it's named to do. So I'm going to start a build. Let's make sure none are started and there was a fourth one. I don't think that's the one that we want. No, it's not. So we're going to uh, start a build with the start build command and it's to do. Aha! So now we have a fifth builder running. So I can look at the logs. And this should look familiar. So it's pulling down the latest source code and then it's going to do a build. So if I were allow this to finish running, and uh, it would push out a new version of my container, we'd be able to see that it changed the uh, text on the left-hand side to task list. But we're going to let this go and complete our uh, demo for this video. In the next video, we're going to explore scaling and clustering in OpenShift.